I hope you like yarn because I have so many things to show you. It's basically going to be a yarn parade. <laughs> It's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 215 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Sunday, February 4th. <laughs> I do that every single time. Um, I believe it's February 4th, but we are um, in Dallas this week. So I am currently in our van, in our home, but we are parked in our friend's driveway. You're going to see there's a street behind me, there's cars going by. Um, we have beautiful sunny weather today. I think it's going to be like 60 degrees, which is amazing, but it hasn't gotten too warm in here yet. So I do have on a hand knit sweater. Yes, I do own hand knits. This is the only, I think this is the only top that I have with me currently in the van. The only other hand knits I have are a hat, a scarf, and socks. I think that's true. And Kent has a few hats too. So this sweater is the Citrine Light by Emily Green, and I finished it last May. And if you were watching the podcast then or following on Instagram, you know that I had lots of different like issues with the sweater, not the pattern and nothing with the pattern, but I did um, like rip things out and redo things several times, enough so that by the time I was done with the sweater, not only was it getting warm because it was May, I was also just totally sick of looking at it. I didn't think that, I felt like I put so much effort into it and then it came out and I just like wasn't super happy with it. So I put it away for a long time, like months and months and months. And when we just went back to my parents in November, I got it out and started wearing it. And then we came back by my parents' house, my parents in Nashville, that's where we keep all of our other things that don't fit in the van. I decided to bring it with me because it's just a great basic sweater. It makes me look dressed up, I feel like, if I need to look dressed up because all my other wardrobe is t-shirts basically. And so I really like it. Um, here's what it looks like. It's got a twisted rib on it, these really cool shoulders, and it's got rib on the bottom. This is where I had to make some changes. And I think now it fits me really, really nicely. I'm wearing leggings right now. I think it looks good with leggings, looks good with jeans, looks good with pants. Anyway, I've been wearing this a lot lately because it's kind of just like wearing a sweatshirt. I still haven't properly gone and woven in my ends on the sleeve and I don't know when I will. I just keep tucking them in. One other thing before we get into the episode today, you may notice a toaster is not here. That is because he is inside our friend's house, super comfy and cozy. The last I saw him, he was in the guest bedroom, in the bed, all by himself, just having some toaster alone time, cozy, sleeping. So I didn't want to disturb him and bring him out here to the van and make him think that we're leaving today or anything. So he's in there comfortable, but I do have Wyatt, uh, my alpaca that I got at Bliss Yarns. This is actually alpaca fur and it is super, super soft. And Kent named him Wyatt and he is gonna be here Maybe we'll just set him. Oh, you know what? He will just lay down right there. <laughs> now, this hot podcast episode is not going to have the in our travels section this week because I have so much to tell you just verbally about what we did this week. We went to three yarn stores. I also acquired a ton of yarn. I've also been sitting on a few uh, yarn, like how do I explain this? Um, dyers that I work with, that I am friends with, that have sent me some yarn that I have not been able to share yet because it hasn't come out on their pages yet, but now it has, so I can share it with you. So essentially we are gonna have an enormous section talking about yarn, yarn stores, and basically what we've been doing this week instead of a mini vlog this week. So again, just hope you uh, enjoy yarn. Um, I'm guessing if you're here, you do. And let's get into the episode. First up this week, we're gonna talk about my Muscleboro hat. So Muscleboro is a pattern by Isolde Teague and I have made many of them. And I just started this one last week. What is happening here? I did not realize that it is tangled up in my bag. This is actually a needle that I'm no longer using and I'm gonna put away, but I just wanted to show you first. I don't know how this happened. It's like necklaces when they're in your bag. Okay, I've made a ton of progress 
since last week on this one. This is the project I've been working on the most. It's been super great for a really busy week that we've had where I did a lot of knitting at the beginning and haven't done a lot since. So I just started last week where my little s'mores marker is. I can't remember who that one's from. I had just I was on double pointed needles because I'm using a US 3. This is sport weight yarn. And I had just almost gotten to the end of the increases for the crown. So you start at one crown, like so, and then you increase, and then you work straight for a while, and then on the other end you decrease, and you have a double, basically a double knit hat. So I'm doing a couple of fun things with this one. Um, I don't know if they're fun. <laughs> I don't know why I said fun. I'm doing a couple of interesting things with this one. Um, you can see there's some ribbing here. Uh, there's about three inches of one by one rib. So my plan for this hat is to have it be a little bit slouchy. I just like that for my head shape and body. I, I'm a kind of semi-tall person and I have a really small head. <laughs> and so I'm always trying to think like, you know, how do I balance that out with um, hair or hats or whatever? And I just don't find a fitted hat is my favorite look on me. So I like a slightly slouchy hat, but I also want it to fold up. So not only will the hat be double all the way around, when you fold up that double layer, you have four layers on your ears and it's really, really warm and actually so functional. That's why I love these hats so much. So for this one, uh, this is about the width that will fold up, about three inches. And I've determined this from my other hats that I've made. I try to keep good project notes in all of my project pages for this hat. Um, so this part will fold up. So on one side, you'll have a stockinette stitch hat with a ribbing that will fold up for the brim. On the other side, you'll have a stockinette stitch hat and stockinette that will fold up for the brim. So I'll essentially have two different styles of hats depending on what I want to wear. So I'd already determined, I hadn't determined that last week. I kind of thought of that as I, as things went on. I thought, yeah, that would be really cool. I haven't done one exactly like that yet. Um, so I thought I would give it a try. So I know the measurements that I need to hit for these different seg sections. And for me, for my size, from where, can you see it? From where are these increases in? So like right here to where the brim section begins, I need six and a half inches. And then for each of these brims, if you're thinking like both sides, I need three inches. So that's a six inch section in total. So I'll have three inches of rib, another three inches of stockinette, and then I need the other side. I need six and a half inches on the other side. So this is a lot of length in the middle. Six and a half plus six and a half is 13 plus another six is 19. So I basically I'm aiming for 19 inches between the crowns. So I have been weighing my skein and these skeins were over a hundred grams. But by the time I got to here, this should be the dead center of my hat. It's got the uh, crown, <laughs> it's got the body, it's got the brim. And then I repeat that in the reverse order, brim, body, crown. So this is halfway. So I should have uh, half of my yarn or a little more left and I only had I think 50 grams left and since this was a I want to say it was like a 108 gram thing I really needed to have 54 grams so don't panic I have more of this yarn so my plan is to incorporate at least four to five grams probably a little more than that so I can have some wiggle room into the hat somewhere kind of discreetly like I'll alternate it with this one and just feed it in uh, one row of the you know, supplemental yarn, one row of this, somewhere that's gonna be discreet, somewhere that's not gonna be super noticeable. I don't wanna do it on the crown of the other hat because if I'm thinking about this right and I want to wear the rib side out, I'm gonna to need to use the crown here on the other side. If I wanna wear stockinette side out, I'm gonna need this crown. So basically both crowns, I don't want to show um, any kind of color change. I mean, they're really close. They're slightly different, the other, balls that I have. So I'm thinking I need to put it somewhere where in the body because no, not in the body. I need to put it in the point of the brim where it folds, I think, but that may only apply to one side. I need to think it through. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. It probably wouldn't be noticeable anyway, but basically I need to supplement a little bit more yarn. One skein of sport weight for me for the length and the size that I want is not quite going to do it. So I'll figure that out this week. Um, something else you may notice is that I am on 16 inch circular needles. 
Yay. <laughs> okay, I spent way too long in the last podcast talking my way around not buying more needles. Uh, basically, I have whittled down my needle collection to the essentials um, because it's just easier that way. Also, I have certain needle brands that I really, really like. Um, other ones I'm sure I would like too, but I know I like these. These are the ones I need. I just want to keep it nice and simple. Um, but I did not have ma magic loop needles or 16 inch circulars in a size three. So I started out the hat with double pointed size threes because that's just what I had. And then I got to go to the body and I needed to figure out another way to knit on those because the double pointed needles, one, I just, I don't love working with them. They were fine for the hat. In some way, double pointed needles make me feel like I'm um, like remembering history in a way, kind of going back to like original methods for knitting, but it's just not my favorite way to do it. And also I had too many stitches. It was hard to keep all the stitches on the needles. It just wasn't comfortable. So I wanted to switch over to either circulars or magic loop. And then I remembered, hey, I could have been using these the whole time. These are the Chaogu Forte, the original Chaogu Forte needles. So they've got metal tips, and then they've got wood in the middle and then metal again at the end. These are the swivel cords. Um, there are new Chaogu Fortes that have um, apparently been improved, but these needles are, are nice. Um, they're still, they're not my favorite for two reasons. One, when I use these, I don't know if you can like, if you can hear that, but they're, even though I use Chaogu metal needles, at other times and I'm fine with it. Something about just the tip part of the needle, having the metal it makes a sound that I don't really like. <laughs> and then the other thing is the swivel cords are really, really lovely most of the time. But for some reason with the smaller needles, when you're doing magic loop, it makes it really hard to get your first and last few stitches up onto the cord. So that was driving me crazy. Um, and I didn't have a fixed cord long enough. I needed a 40. So I knit from the crown to the rib on magic loop and it was kind of a pain and I was kind of thinking you know when I get to the next yarn store if I'm still if it's still bothering me I'll go ahead uh get uh 16 inch needles it's you know twelve dollars it's not that really not that big of a deal and then I did the ribbing and it was totally fine it was like the stitches were a little looser in the ribbing and I had no trouble sliding my stitches onto the needle so I thought you know what I'm good to go <laughs> I am going to use this for the rest of the hat I am even going to use it for the other crown and we're going to be totally fine and in business and I don't need to get another needle look at me this is great I was sitting in Arkansas Yarn Company at their knit night as I went from rib back to stockinette. That first row, first and second row, just try pushing, pushing, pushing the stitches onto the needle. And I was like, you know what? Forget it. This is ridiculous. It is such a pain to, to uh, do this. And plus all of you last week were like, just get the needle. You knit muscle bro hats all the time. And I thought, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to get the needle. So... I bought a 16 inch needle. It was $12. I'm so much happier for it. And I also, for some reason last week, I was thinking that I would need to buy a wooden circular needle, which wouldn't like fit my collection. I have Chaogu fixed needles in sizes one, two, and now a size three. And then for everything else, I have my Lantern Moon wooden needles um, sizes four and up. And so this just, actually, I think I have size three and up. I just didn't have enough long enough cord. So anyway, I've talked way too long about needles again, but basically you all were right. Just get the needles. I need to put these away now. Um, they just didn't work out for this project and that's okay. I, I don't know yet if I'll use double pointed needles or use magic loop for the crown on the other side. Next I have my socks. I am making the Vanilla is the New Black Socks by Nay Fletcher. And I am working on these very slowly because I'm only knitting on them right now, at least while I am reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm actually reading the fifth 
fourth slash fifth book, um, A Court of Silver Flames, and it's so good. I'm about 70% of the way done. So I'm definitely gonna have more, <laughs> more to go. Like this is only the first sock by the time I finish the book and that's a-okay. So I've made a little bit of progress since last week. So the Orange is the New Black socks have the Strong Heel, my first time doing this, and I've tried it on and it seems like a great fit. Essentially, it's a set of increases that you do uh, starting in the leg that kind of give you, you know, a heel flap and semi gusset. And then what I had not done yet last week was the heel turn. So I decided to do the heel turn in a contrast color, just like I did for my cuff. That way I wasn't using the self-striping yarn to go back and forth because I could control, um, actually I got very lucky and I ended a stripe right when I ended my increases for the heel. I was planning to just either add an extra round or take off a round. There's a few plain rounds at the end there if I needed to because I wanted to end at the end of a stripe so that I could add in my contrast. And that way, when I started back up in the round again, you can see I just have a teensy bit of blue and then I go straight into the orange. So that was very lucky. We'll have to see if that happens on the second sock. Um, I can't really guarantee it. I could always cut the yarn or I could, you know, fudge and add or take away a row if needed. But I like to pay attention to that because I like it to be a clean place to insert in the heel. So that worked great um, for the contrast. The designer has some notes in the Ravelry pattern page for this design that gave you tips on like how to uh, how to add in your contrast color, what rows to do it in, and then what rows to pick back up the self-striping again. So the only other thing that I've done here is after I did about one stripe, about six, seven rows of this uh, of the foot, I did some decreases. I like to do that to make the sock a little bit smaller for my foot so I get a tighter foot. Like I did on these socks, <laughs> I'm wearing some handed socks today as well, and it just fits really, really nicely for me. So basically, once I got through the heel, I'm just doing my own thing for the foot and for the toe. Um, I do know that the designer said you may want to make your foot a little bit shorter because this is a very stretchy heel, so I will be keeping that in mind, trying this on and making sure that it fits nicely. Now this yarn, is Desert Vista Dye Works, my first Desert Vista Dye Works yarn, and it is called A Court Of, which is exactly what you're thinking. It is for A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I have been um, saving this yarn for reading the last book. I also just learned this week from several of you that sent me um, this information that Sarah J Moss is writing another A Court of Thorns and Roses book. So I don't know if that means I will make the first sock, finish this book, and then wait for the next one to come out. I also thought about um, starting one of her other book series and continuing to work on these socks so they don't sit idle for a long time. But I am very much enjoying having a designated reading project to work on in the morning and sometimes even at night as well. I've been getting to sit and read with my tea and a little bit of chocolate at night. And it's just been a really lovely ritual to make sure that I'm getting you know some love on each of my different projects. I have one new project this week and I almost got it done for the podcast, but I didn't quite get it done. So I guess I, I guess I didn't. <laughs> um, this is actually for a swap. So my partner, Cindy, is gonna be receiving this for me. Um, hopefully I can finish it and send it out by the end of this week. So Cindy, if you're watching and you don't wanna see what I'm sending you yet, <laughs> then skip on to the next project. But I am making one of my own patterns. <laughs> I am making a yarn cozy light. So this is a fun little project, super great for gifts, super functional for yourself. Um, that is a cozy to hold your yarn cake. So if you pull from the center, like I do, wait, let me see, do I have, I have a crochet, my crochet version on um, this one here that looks like this. Um, but if you pull from the center of your cakes, I just had an extra, some yarn barf come out. So I wrapped it around the outside. But if you pull from the center of your cakes, these are great because they just, they take on the wear and tear of going in and out of your project bag instead of your yarn. Also, as you pull from the center, 
your yarn uh, cake will start to collapse. And these cozies will hold on to that and keep it from collapsing like or becoming a mess in your project bag until the very end. It is wild how much they will hold on to it. So this is one of my knitted versions. You can see it's slightly ribby and they're just really fun and easy to make. So I only have a few more rows before I do the I-cord at the top that finishes it off. I'm also planning to make a 20 gram mini yarn cozy to go with this. So again, for my swap partner, um, she will have a set of cozies that she can use for socks, which is really, really fun. Oh wait, I have one. I have one right here because I also have one on the contrast color for my Accord of Thorns and Roses socks. So again, for 20 grams, Super great, super fun. I always just wrap the extra yarn around the outside. That's why you're seeing that. So that is what I started this week and I'm hoping to finish up. Now this yarn though is very special because it has not come out yet. Um, this is from Ruby and Roses and it's part of her brand new Taylor Swift collection that is coming out on February 10th. I'm gonna talk about it more in our next segment, which is gonna be basically a yarn parade. <laughs> um, this color is Melancholia, I think is how you say it. Uh, oh, that's not really wanted to focus. There we go. And it is again, part of the Taylor Swift collection that will be available for pre-order um, on February 10th. So just look at it. These colors, wait till you see the other ones that I have. I have four of the 13, I believe, that are in the collection. So <laughs> just a small sampling, but the other colors I have go really beautifully with this one as well. And this is a really good representation of how this colorway may look on a sock because I've got about the same number of stitches as a sock on my needle here. So I just think it's coming out super, super pretty. So I need to get to work on these. Hopefully, hopefully I can finish this later today and start my mini one. So you might not see these in the next week's podcast, but I'm hoping it will be a finished object by then. This is not exactly a project that I worked on <laughs> this week, but that's only because I didn't crochet on it. I did, I did work towards it. So I figured I'll just show you, you know, you're going to see this one every single week. So I'll just show it briefly. Um, this is the Summer Fade Hexi Blanket by Mallory Crawl, and it is my travel blanket, the one that I'm putting in all of the yarns that I've been getting as we travel. Now I haven't added anything to it this week because I have so much yarn that I got at Yarny Girl last weekend and I needed to get it all wound. So uh, this past Wednesday night, <laughs> um, we got to stay with one of my Love and Stitches members, um, got to meet her in person for the first time. She invited us to stay at our house, which was super lovely. We got to spend time with her. Um, we got, went to a meadery, then we went to the yarn store, then we went back to our house and just chatted until late. Um, it was just a really lovely time. And I asked her before we got there, I was like, I have so much yarn that I did not buy at a yarn store. So I don't feel like I can go into yarn stores and ask them to, to wind this for me or ask to wind, you know, use their winder. Could I please use your ball winder and Swift while I'm there? And she said, yes. So I spent the better part of an hour, maybe more, winding yarns for my blanket. So I wound, let's see, and I haven't even wound all of them yet. I, I wound a couple of colors from the Ruby and Roses Taylor Swift collection, so that's not for my blanket, but I, so I wound one, two, and I'll talk about all these as they go into my blanket. Um, oh wow, it's less than I thought. Three, four, five, six minis. Sorry, why don't you want to focus with me? Ooh, um, super pretty here. And I still have, let me put all these back. I still have, and I don't know when I'm going to wind these. So I'm kind of stuck adding things to my blanket because I wanna wind everything that I got in New Orleans before I add it to my blanket. Oh, there's, I've been looking for that. My, uh, hold on, you can't see it. It's my king cake stitch marker. I need to use that before actual Mardi Gras on the 13th. I still have four more skeins to wind. So I wanna get all of these wound from Yarny Gras so that I can decide the best order to put them in because I like to add hexies to my blanket in the order that I got them. But since these all came from the same event, I'm okay like mixing them up. Um, if they all look good in any way, I 
legitimately will be like, which booth did I go to first? <laughs> which one did I buy minutes before the other? Because my brain just works that way sometimes. Um, but also I'm okay putting them out of order. So I've got to figure out, oh, you know what? I could ask my friend Brooke if I could go over to her house. I think she's got a ball winder in Swift. So maybe I'll do that today <laughs> while I'm here. So it doesn't look like I got a lot wound, but that's because I also wound um, some other yarns and handing, hand winding takes a minute. So basically I spent, I invested in winding to get this blanket going. So I will have all of those to add, plus some more that I'm about to show you to add into my blanket hopefully very, very soon so I can catch back up and be back to where I am like adding my hexes in at the yarn store because that is my absolute favorite. Pardon the interruption. I just want to say a big thank you to Craftsy for sponsoring today's podcast. Craftsy is an online community where millions of crafters and makers find creative inspiration, advance their skills, and learn new ones along the way. Craftsy offers more than 2,000 exciting classes in over 20 categories. You're going to see knitting, crocheting, quilting, baking, woodworking, painting, and more. Let's just dive into the knitting category. You are definitely going to see some familiar faces like Susan B. Anderson, Zandi Peters, Laura Nelkin, Vincent Green, and more. Classes are available for a range of skills. So whether you're a beginner in something or learning to advance your skills, you're going to find the perfect class for you. As a member, you'll have 24 seven access to Craftsy classes, and you'll also get access to their live streaming tutorials and Q and A's where their expert instructors share their tips, answer questions, and engage with the Craftsy community in real time. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the video description will get a full year of premium membership to Craftsy for just $1.49. With over 2000 classes and more than 20 creative categories, there's always something new to learn. Thanks again to Craftsy for sponsoring today's podcast. And now back to the video. I hope you like yarn because I have so many things to show you. It's basically going to be a yarn parade. So <laughs> I have, okay, I have like several different things we're going to share in this section. And again, this is going to be in the place of our inner travel section this week because one, I have so much to talk about. And two, I'm going to be sharing with you our visits to three different yarn stores along the way because it just kind of makes sense because many of these yarns I got at yarn stores, but I'm first going to start with two yarns um, that I received a couple of weeks ago that I've been dying to share with you um, that are from some of my yarn dyer friends. Um, both of these friends are people that I have um, worked with before and dyed yarn with before, and now I'm honored to be an affiliate for them. So I get their yarn you know, every month and I get to share it with you. And it's just like one of the best parts of this job. Truly, it is so much fun. So let's start with the Pretty Twisted Yarn Die Hard Club. So this is a monthly yarn subscription, or actually you can just do it. Um, you can just do one month to try it out. Um, but I think once you start, you're going to really, really love it. Um, that Pretty Twisted Yarns puts on. I have February's color which you should have gotten at the end of January or in the first few days of February. But just in case you haven't received yours yet, you're going to want to look away. <laughs> um, she's already shared. I think she shared the inspiration, but I'm going to also show the colorway in just a second. So let me make sure there's nothing. OK, I didn't want to make sure there's no codes. So basically every month there are these beautiful inspiration photos for the yarn. And then you receive a skein of yarn from Pretty Twisted Yarns. Um, and this month's colorway is so beautiful. It is called Life is Like a Box of Chocolates. I have it on the lavish base. Lavish? Why does that sound weird? Um, it is an 8515 Superwash Merino nylon. How perfect is this for February? It's so pretty. I love the pink, of course, and I love the red, and then there's browns and speckles, and it's just absolutely stunning for February. So you only can get this if you're a part of the Die Hard Club. And again, you can get one month, like you can just do one box at a time, or you can sign up um, for your subscription. I wrote down a couple of other notes. So let me make sure I get it right. Um, you can sign up anytime. 
but you want to sign up before the 10th to get that month's box. So these have already gone out, but if you want to sign up for February's box, I mean March's box, sorry, you need to sign up by February 10th and then you'll receive it by the end of the month for the following month. The details are all on the listing page. I'll make sure to link it down below, um, but it's a really, really fun thing and the colors have been incredible so far. So thank you so much, Teresa, for this month. It's really singing to me. I hope I can get something made out of it this month, but um, I'm going to hold on to this colorway for a bit anyway. Okay, next up is the Ruby and Roses Taylor Swift collection that I was talking about earlier. Um, it is going to be available for pre-order on Saturday, February 10th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Now, you should be able to get the quantities and colors that you want. Um, I know Addie is planning to have this open for maybe two weeks. She's been sharing the colorways. Okay. Let's just, I, have, I took a screen recording of this. She's been sharing the colorways and the inspiration photos and her notes and everything on Instagram. And it's been so cool to see the like process behind the inspiration for the colors. I'm not even like a, the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Like I said, I don't know what these colorways mean necessarily, except for some of the ones that are like references to older songs, but the colors and the pictures, it's so good. So I think even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, you're go going to love this one. Um, but she's planning to have the pre-order open for at max two weeks. So I would kind of say order early because you know they're a small business, they can only um, dye so many things. So if you wanna make sure you get these colors, you wanna get in there at the beginning and grab what you're looking for. So I have four of the 13 colors to show you. You'll have to go to her Instagram to see all of the other ones. And let's just start with the one I already showed, which was um, Melancholia, I think is how you say it. Super pretty. And then I, I shared that these colors go together nicely. So I also have this one, uh, which I've wound up because I have some plans for it. It is called, I think it's Lavender Haze. I have the, yes, Lavender Haze is this one. And at first glance, it's looking like a solid, but it does have some really subtle like blue and deeper violet speckles in there. So I think it looks really, really pretty with this one, but it also looks so good <laughs> with this one. This one is Lover, Addie's version, and the inspiration photos on that were so, so good. Um, I have all these on her soft rose base, which is an 8515. She's got lots of bases. I think last I asked her, she had like 13 bases. And then finally, and again, this is just four of the colors of many. These are the ones that I got. This one was my favorite. And I am not normally a fan of this color. And when she shared with us this collection, I was like, I have to have that color it is a yellow and I love it. It's called Love Story, which is definitely a song that I know because it's one of her, I don't know if it's her first album, but it's one of the ones in the beginning. And it is the prettiest color I could not, I could not resist. So it's got, you know, it's like sunny and golden yellow, but then it also has cooler tone yellows. It even has neon yellow, bright blues, bright pink, bright coral. I mean, it's just got so many colors in it. And again, I think it goes really well with this lavender haze. I think you could even put it together with the melancholia. Maybe this one? Nah, this one's a little more cool, but there are so many more colors. There's a lot of there's a really pretty blue that I think she just put out yesterday from when I'm filming this. So many beauties in that collection. So again, I have Love Story, uh, Lover, Addie's Version, Melancholia, Lavender Haze, and there's many, many more. So uh, make sure to set yourself an alarm for Saturday, February 10th at 6 p.m. And I'll put uh, my affiliate link to Addie's store down below. Um, just in case, well, let me put these back. Um, just in case you're not familiar with the way that affiliates work, it's no extra cost to you, but it does also support me um, if you use my link. And if you are a first time buyer from Ruby and Roses, you get a discount if you use my link. So make sure to do that if you remember. I always appreciate that. Okay, now we're gonna go into what I'm gonna call our yarn in our travels for this week. <laughs> so we started out the week in Louisiana and then we drove through Mississippi, uh, 
in Tennessee for like 15 minutes through Memphis and made our way into Northeast Arkansas. And that's where I stayed with my friend Teresa. And we went to a knit night at the Unraveled Yarn Boutique in Paragold, Arkansas. This yarn store, I have, I have a reel that I filmed that I will put out eventually, but it is a yarn store slash bookstore. So, and it's huge, one entire side is yarn. And then, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. It's split half and half, but it's a huge store. So there's tons of books and tons of yarn. And then they also have a massive seating area with a few couches. And for the knit night, we had tons of tables all around. Um, people were knitting, people were crocheting. Uh, some people brought their kids. Um, they were knitting and crocheting, which was just spectacular. And they also had a big rug in the center. So Toaster came in, he laid down on the rug and he absolutely loved it. So it was such a lovely time. They had some snacks for us, some mead from the local meadery that we happened to go through to before that. We still have some bottles uh, that we got, so I'm excited <laughs> to have those another time, but it was just the loveliest time um, there. And Petra was so sweet and uh, so gracious to host that kind of you know, we planned it like maybe a week out. So she did just a fantastic job. Um, she also, oh crap, uh, I forgot to grab this and put it out. I have like, I literally have everything stacked in order, um, but she gave me, they make these really cute water bottles that have like the straws. I think you get like a metal and a plastic straw in it that has crochet on it and their name on it. And they gifted that to me. Thank you so much, Petra. But I also wanted to grab some local yarn. There wasn't any um, local fingering weight yarn that I could put into my blanket. But um, the, they did have this beautiful local alpaca and it's actually an alpaca rescue farm. So it's called Sanctuary Farm and what does that say? Rest House. It's in Maynard, Arkansas, and it's super, super soft. So this particular uh, yarn came from Gertie and Duchess. <laughs> Those are the alpaca's names. And this is an undyed um, alpaca yarn. Uh, Arkansas raised and spun in Oklahoma, which I just thought was so cool. So I grabbed two skeins of it and I'm planning to do um, a giveaway within my, or a prize within my membership with these two beautiful skeins because I de definitely wanted to get something local while we were there. So that was on Wednesday night. And then on uh, Friday night, we went to Hot Springs Fiber Company in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is another amazing yarn store. We got to meet Tracy and so many people. We did a Friday afternoon um, stitch time. There was a ton of people there, which was so much fun. And I got so many goodies from Hot Springs. Uh, let's see, let me pull them all over here. So Tracy, the owner of Hot Springs Fiber Company um, is also a yarn dyer. And so she has her in-house yarns there. And I, of course, I had to get some of those. So actually, let me start with this one. So they do a color of the year every single year. And the 2024 color of the year is West Mountain. This is a mountain that you can actually see from the store, um, which is really cool. And it's such a beautiful color. I They're still dyeing it on all of their different yarn bases. Um, this is called Luster Wool. It is a 65% superwash merino and 35% bamboo. And it's a 50 gram skein. So this is great for my blanket. I have some other like bamboo wool yarns in there. So that's gonna go into my blanket. I only got that one wound because we were busy chitting and chit chatting and all kinds of things. And it's just, I have a lot of yarn winding to do. I already texted my friend to see <laughs> if I could go over there to wind some yarn. So I got that and then they do a lot of really fun, like the community there is so good. Um, it's not only like they're, they're friends, but they're so um, invested in projects together and invested in the um, Hot Springs Fiber Co. yarn. It's really, really fun. Oh, you know what? Um, I actually didn't get to talk to Tracy much about this, but Kent was chatting with her about it, that they have a spring underneath their store and so the yarn that they dye comes from, or the water for the yarn that they dye comes from the spring, which like, 
Is that not the coolest thing ever? I just, obviously, I, you know, you think of, uh, of a city, I think of hot springs and I do think of the springs, but I kind of forget that like that actually becomes part of the life there. It's not just like a tourist thing. Um, so yeah, we had some great water <laughs> while we were there. Okay, so they have these things, or they used to do this thing called the scrumptious sock box. And it was a subscription and they don't do it right now, but they did have some um, in the store that were like, like this one's from September of last year. And it's a scrumptious sock box because it is comfort food uh, inspired. So this one was inspired by um, King Blue Crab Cakes and it comes with a recipe. And then look at the yarn. It's just like perfect for those colors. This one's on the Seriously Sock, which is an 8515. I've got some other yarn in that one. There's a little marker on here, a little mini skein, a recipe. And I just thought that was super, super cute. So they um, gifted that to me. Thank you so, so much. Now what they do now and what several people were working on in the store, and I I'm kicking myself because I didn't get a picture of any in progress projects, but I did get a video of the inspiration wall. So they now do a blanket club and you can choose from one of like seven color inspirations. These photos that we're showing are photos that Tracy took um, herself and then she um, use that inspiration to dye several colorways. And then she also designed a knit and a crochet blanket that you can use your yarns in and work like one strip or one block per month. And so if I was not traveling full time, I would be getting this blanket kit, but you can go and find that information on their website. I'll have their website down below and join the blanket. I don't call it a blanket club. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it looked so, so fun. And then two other things real quickly. Um, Kent got a skein to give away. This is the Magic Merino Sport. Actually don't have a colorway on this one, but we thought it would be good for assigned pooling, which is what our members are gonna be doing this month. And then I had to get this one. It's called French Garden. Just thought it's such a pretty colorway. And I figured I can put it into my blanket for some Arkansas yarn. I'll let that show up. And also use it for something really, really pretty. Okay, that is hot springs. I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. Oh, I had got some stickers. They had a bunch of stickers. So how cute are these? I'm going to put these on my computer. It says, what does it say? A woman cannot survive on books alone. She also needs yarn, a lot of yarn. You know, I'm very into reading. I got a granny square and I got some sheep that are like dangling down from a knitting needle. Thought that was so cute. Okay. So while we were at Hot Springs, I also met um, Jennifer, who her son Harrison is a yarn dyer, and they work together on the company, and they are called Dying Cat Yarn. So she gifted me a couple skeins of yarn. This one is called Stormy Nights, and since it's a fingering weight um, plied yarn, I think I'll be adding that one into my blanket. And then she also gave me this really beautiful bright one called Mayflowers. It's a single ply and I'll put their shop um, down below as well. How are we doing? <laughs> this is a lot of yarn. <laughs> Again, I'm having, I, I, I think I spent an hour and 15 minutes planning the podcast today. For reference, it usually takes me between 30 and 45 minutes to plan a podcast and just get all my notes down. But today I was like, I have so much yarn to share. I sat here and I was like pulling things out of, you know, everywhere because the last two weeks have been pretty chaotic and things haven't always been put back you know work I'm kind of running out of space I'm about to do uh I'm about to like wind some yarn clean up some projects send some things back to my parents that just can't possibly be stored here anymore send out some giveaways I mean it's just a constant management of stuff but I sat here and I was pulling everything out and then like gathering notes and collecting things because I don't want to tell you the incorrect information for any of these yarns or small businesses because I want you to be able to find them and know about them. And so it, I took a long time today um, getting that all organized. And I was shocked to see how much time had passed from when I started planning to when I was ready to record today. So um, if you're not a yarn person, I totally understand if you're not like, don't love just like watching and seeing yarn. But I bet there are some of you out there that are like, ooh, I see a colorway <laughs> that I gotta get. <laughs> okay, um, let's go to our last yarn store. 
let's travel to Arkansas Yarn Company. So we actually went to Arkansas Yarn Co. on three different days. We went there first for a knit night on Thursday night. It was a really lovely time. Um, we were, I think we probably had like 15 or so people there and it was just casual. We didn't, uh, we like, I like sort of announced it in advance, but not, you know, not a guarantee that we would be, would be there because we kind of had travel that day. And so it was just much more casual um, and it was great. And we just enjoyed our time together um, at the, at, that knit night. Um, but then the next day we got up and we filmed at Arkansas Yarn Company. And not only did we film a store tour and an interview with Lori, the owner, like we typically do, but we also dyed some yarn. And this video is not going to come out for about a month. Um, so it's going to be a while before you see the, the inspiration behind it. But I want to show you the yarn that we dyed because it is available right now and will only be available through the end of February. So I want to make sure you can get it if you like it. So I did not realize that um, I was going to be picking out the colors for this yarn. I thought that Lori maybe would have um, like a colorway kind of design because I'll show you later. The, we did an event and she dyed a mini skein for it. So I thought we were just going to dye the same color as that. So we get <laughs> we get our aprons on, our gloves on, um, and we're like ready to dye. And she's like, so what color do you want to make? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was not ready. So of course I said pink because I love pink. So sorry to the non-pink lovers here, but I said pink, but I'm like, you know, I want it to be sophisticated. Um, and you know what I want? I want it to be inspired by your tea. So I want to show you the tea first. This is um, Plum Deluxe Tea, which is uh, a brand in Oregon, and they are fantastic. I actually did their advent calendar this year, and I'm still drinking it. It's delicious. Um, but Arkansas Yarn Co. has their own blend. It's called Rustic Apricot Rose, and it is so good. So look at the colors in here. We've got like the purpley pink, we've got some yellow, um, we've got, you know, brown and everything. And I'm telling you, this tea is absolutely delicious. So I'm like, I want it to be inspired by this tea. Um, honey bush tea, oh, that's why I like it. I love honey bush tea. Um, apple pieces, hibiscus, peach, rose petals, calendula, and apricot essence. Um, so they have that at the store. And this is the yarn that we came up with. And I actually dyed this one. Lori dyed the sparkle, um, but they are just so pretty. We're going to do maybe a little giveaway with some of these. Eventually, I got to talk through the details um, with Lori. So I might have that for next week. But it's got that purpley soft pink and a lot of white space, which I really like. And so many speckles. We must have done three or four different methods to speckle which was so fun. And so, like I said, I dyed this one myself, which I'm really proud of. My hand was cramping up so badly. Dyers, I knew it was a physical job, but I did not think about like your, your hands, like having to hold all those tiny utensils and do such like intricate work. Oh my goodness, I could barely do it. Um, so Lori came up with the cutest name ever for this. Are you ready? It is called Nitty Natty. Isn't that so sweet? Hi Kent. Hey. Sorry about that. Kent needed to come in and grab something. Um, so this colorway is going to be available through the end of February. So you can order it, pre-order it in three different bases. Actually, that might not be true. It may be more. That might be the next thing I'm about to talk about. <laughs> I'll have the listing um, linked for you down below. Um, but if you love this colorway, I think you're going to, uh, I think this is going to knit up into like beautiful socks or maybe a beautiful muscle bro hat. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with mine yet, but I am, I'm really pleased with it came out, how it came out. And it was such a fun process. I can't wait to share all of that with you. Okay. I have a few more things from Arkansas Yarn Co. to show you. So the first thing, what do we want to start with? Uh, let's start with their Sock Yarn Society. I know I'm sharing with you so many subscriptions today, and I just hope to share with you so many fun things that, you know, if this is something that you're looking for, you know everything that's out there. <laughs> um, so Arkansas Yarn Company, uh, along with being a yarn store, is a dye studio, and they have something called the Sock Yarn Society. It is a monthly subscription. Um, you, I think it's, you need to sign up by... Um, oh, sorry, it ships on the 10th. So you can join, make any changes to your subscription or skip um, by the 10th. And 
you get so many amazing things. I'm going to show February's, which February's, I think, is shipping on February 10th. So you may want to look away because you probably haven't received yours yet. Hmm. But I did want to show it because this is going to post before February 10th so you can join. Actually, this might have already come. This might have already arrived. I'm trying to remember if the February, if you sign up in February, if you're going to get Marches at the end of February or not. I need to clarify with Lori. <laughs> I'll put it down here. But let me show you the February one. It is so pretty. And it comes with several things. So first you can pick um, if you want to get, uh, this is where you pick one of three bases. They have a high twist base. They have um, this one, which is called um, Yummy Sparkle. And then they have this one that I have, which is called Yummy Plush, which is an 8515. Or the high twist. So I've got all three of our fingering weight bases here. And this colorway is called You Are dot dot dot. And it's a really just beautiful um, pink color, soft and rosy and perfect for February. Now, the theme of the box is You Are. And you get several things in your box. You get a card um, and it has the details of all of that. You also get a discount code on your next order. This one is 15% off and you have a fun little scratch off to do. So the bags or the boxes all say different things. So you've got, you are amazing in this little bag and then tons of goodies in here. Let me show you. Uh, I think Lori said these all say something different. So mine says you are kind. It's a little bracelet with a heart on it. There is the, uh, one serving size sampler of the Lunar New Year Herbal Tea from Plum Deluxe. This is how the their um, advent comes and it's so great. You also get a resin stitch marker um, every single time and they make these in-house so it matches so that it's a little the outline of Arkansas and then this one has a heart as well and they're those ones that open so they're great for knitting or crochet. And then this box also has some um, pink rainbow end stoppers. How cute is that? So this is the Sock Yarn Society that you can sign up for on, on Arkansas Yarn Co. Again, by the 10th of the month. And I apologize that I didn't know in advance. I couldn't remember <laughs> if you're gonna, if you already have February's or when you sign up in February, you're signing up for like the March one. So I'll figure that out. Okay, we've got, another little thing to show. This is just a show because this is from the event. So we went to Arkansas Yarn Co. on Thursday for knit night. We went back on um, Friday to film, to dye the yarn. And then on Saturday, we had a private event. So my camera needed a little bit of a break. And in that time, I also did an entire Zoom class with the membership. And so now it has been about an hour since I have spoken to you and I don't know exactly where we were. So Kent, if you can just trim some stuff out <laughs> and bring us back into where I was talking about this and also our event that we did at Arkansas Yarn Co. So we spent Thursday night at Arkansas, Yar Arkansas Yarn Company with a knit night and then we filmed on Friday and then Saturday we were back for an event and it was so much fun. This is the first time we've done an event quite like this where it was um, a private event where people um, purchased a ticket to come and it was really, really fun. We had about 45 people there. There was food, there were drinks and then there was this awesome goodie bag. And this is not something that anyone else can get but I just wanted to show you what was in it just to kind of show um, just how Lori does things at Arkansas Yarn Company. She's very detailed and just makes things so beautiful and amazing. So everyone that um, got a ticket and came that day got this amazing goodie bag that has Arkansas Yarn Co. on it. It says, all you need is love and Arkansas Yarn Co. Definitely something you can use as a project bag. On the outside, it actually had this little heart keychain. There was hot pink ones and red ones and then this pink. So I gotta think of somewhere to put this because obviously love and stitches, hearts, it's so cute. Um, everyone got a specially dyed mini skein and I love this so much. It's one of my favorite color pinks and I don't think it just says love and stitches and love Arkansas Yarn Co. on it. So I think they're the only ones that are going to get this color. So I'm definitely putting this into my blanket. There was also a 
tuft woolens um, hand balm in here, their scent. And I haven't gotten to smell this yet. It says Arkansas Yarn Co. Wildflowers. Oh. oh, that's nice. It's like light. Oh, that's really pretty. I like that a lot. Um, tuft Woolens is an amazing company. Um, they also make bar like wool washes. So they're um, no packaging or anything, which is really great. That's not it. <laughs> also a little uh, sampler of their Rustic Apricot Rose Blend Tea, the one that I got a full pack of that is so delicious and anyone can um, buy the full pack. And I guess you could grab one of these from Arkansas Yarn Co. A pink heart bracelet, which is just so sweet. And it's got our logo. Oops, my heart flipped upside down. There we go. <laughs> Super sweet. And then last but not least, a really fun sparkly pink resin Arkansas stitch marker. How fun is that? So everyone got these amazing goodie bags that have so much in them. I'm so excited to use every single one. Maybe I'll just leave this tea out. I'll have a little tea in a minute. <laughs> I love the tea so much. Actually, look, now we can compare the yarn and the tea together. Ooh, don't you just love that? Okay. I also got a mini skein. This is their Arkansas Yarn Co's Rose Gold, which is kind of a signature color, and I got it on the sparkle base. So several really fun, beautiful pink things to add into my blanket. My blanket is going to be like purple and green for Mardi Gras, and then it's going to be a ton of pink for Arkansas, which I just think is, it's just funny how, how things go like that. Um, then... I got, where is it? Where have I put these things? I got a couple of gifts that I wanted to share. So the first one is from uh, my friend Emily that I met at DFW Fiberfest. She dyed this yarn and she's not, she doesn't dye to sell, um, but she dyed this yarn for herself and it's a leftover. She lives in Arkansas, so it's another locally Arkansas yarn. And the, so since also, since I stopped filming and started filming again, it started raining. So it's a lot darker outside now and you just can't see how the depth of this color, it's so beautiful. There's blues and greens in it. So she brought it for me because it's a good size leftover and perfect for my blanket. So I'm very excited to add that in. And then from, uh, what am I gonna do next? Oh, from the Barley Pearl Girls who make these bags. Um, that was uh, Chris and Krista. I got an Arkansas bag. So actually, I guess I should show you this side first. It says Arkansas on it. It's got all different things from Arkansas. It's got Hot Springs, Little Rock. It says the natural state. Uh, back on the back here, it says Garmin Woodland Gardens, um, Crater of Diamonds State Park. And it's got a nice big handle on it and a drawstring, which is fantastic. And then inside, it's got pockets. You can't really see them, but I promise there's pockets on both sides. And then they also do these like key, like scissor fob uh, keychain kind of things. And I don't have it with me. I think it's in the front, but they also did a bandana for toaster that has this fabric and it says toaster on it. It is super, super cute. Maybe we have a picture of that we can share. And then one last gift from Sydney. And Sydney has, uh, I'm putting all the links to these shops, to the, to the bags, to the yarn shops I'm talking about. And then um, Sydney Fowler, Fowler Creations, she does these glass pieces. This one is a glass um, ornament, or that's how I'm planning to use it. It is a sheep. And look at all of the little, it's like bumpy, clear. It's just, it's super, super cool. Such a special piece. So I'm very excited about that. It's not going to stay in the van for very long. I'm going to safely wrap it and ship it back to Tennessee because there's just no way something that's glass can bump around with us here, but I definitely want to put it somewhere safe so I can use it in a future home. And then um, I forgot to share this earlier. Actually, I forgot to share this weeks ago. Um, so now we're, we're traveling away from Arkansas Yarn Company and we're going back in time to when we were in North Carolina <laughs> in the beginning of January. Um, 
Black Mountain Yarn Company in Black Mountain, North Carolina is a wonderful yarn store. Um, we stopped by and hung out for a few hours there and they were just getting ready to release their very own spin cycle colorway. And they were kind enough to give me one. I shared in the podcast, but I could only share in black and white because they hadn't released the colorway yet. And then in the week since, I keep meaning to share it in the podcast and I keep forgetting. And so I remember today when I was getting all of these yarns together, so I thought, perfect, I can talk about this in my yarn section. So this is the color, it's called First Light. It is a pink, it's also got blues, yellows, light purple in it. Everyone is, you know, slightly different as it always is with Spin Cycle. Now I just checked their website. It doesn't look like they have any currently in stock. I'm guessing when it released a couple weeks ago, it all sold out right away. Um, but maybe if this is something that you're like, oh, I have to have some of that when they get it again, um, give Black Mountain Yarn Company a follow because they will have it there in their store. Okay, that was the most yarn I think I've ever talked about in this podcast in one go. Um, every week will not be like this. I know the past two have had a lot of yarn in them, um, but we're actually about to spend two weeks going to national parks. And last time I checked, they do not sell yarn in the, in the national parks. So my plan to, actually it's gonna be tomorrow cause already getting kind of late today. I'm about to go meet up with some friends in Dallas and uh, spend a little time with them while we're here. But my plan tomorrow is to get myself organized. Um, my friend, I've just been talking to her. She's bringing me her yarn winder to borrow so I can wind some yarn. I'm going to get myself organized and hopefully over the next two weeks, I can crochet up and knit up and sort out all of this yarn that has been coming in. But it is such a joy to be able to um, share all of this with you, to show it here on the podcast. And don't be surprised if you see a couple of these things end up in giveaways, especially if you're in the Love and Citrus membership. Um, I just, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much for one person to ever make in their lifetime. So it's always fun to share. New video this week is something a little bit different. It is not a yarn store or a dye studio tour. It is just plain old me working on planning out my projects for the year. So I have this, I think it's not, a, it's not, it's not an original idea. It's, it's the first time I've thought about it. Um, something I've been wanting to do for years is plan uh, an intentional wardrobe, something that I can plan ahead for and start filling in the gaps in my hand knitted wardrobe or in my wardrobe in general and filling it up with hand knits um, rather than store bought items. So I'm starting with that already by making my alpaca hat. Where did it go? I'm gonna make an alpaca hat and also I have matching gloves and I wanna make a matching infinity scarf. So that's just one part of it. Most of the other things are sweaters. So I talk all about how I am um, planning for that, how I like brainstormed for it, how I researched patterns, all in that video. So if you like project planning videos or if you just like seeing um, some, you know, an array of patterns out there, um, check that out. I think you will like that one. And then next week, we're going to be back into yarn stores. We are going to Paper Crane Yarns um, in Alabama. The the city is is failing me. I'm not remembering it right now. It's south of Birmingham. Um, but we were there just a few weeks ago and had a wonderful time there. I think you're really going to like that yarn store tour. Uh, some other things, events that are coming up, I'm going to try to go in order by date. So the first one is another yarn thing. <laughs> I did share this in full last week. So if you want to see more of it, um, you can go there. But the Woolen Women yarn box for March is um, on sale right now. It is, we're off, what was it called again? Hold on, I have to get it right. Um, we're off to see the wonderful Wizard of Wool. Um, we are traveling around virtually to different wonderful places. And they're another wonderful subscription that you can do. You can do DK weight yarn with them or fingering weight yarn with them. All of the details will be down below. This is Emerald City. Um, that is the yarn. I got the DK weight base. Um, this one also is an immersive box. So it's got lots of different fun things. Wool wash, amazing stitch markers. Um, how cute are those? 
a candle, a bag, all the scents and everything to remind you of the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Um, so that is gonna be on sale through February 21st to order and then we'll ship in March. So make sure to check that out. The next thing is uh, the Rose City Yarn Crawl. This is the first time I'm talking about it here on the channel and we are going to be there in Portland, Oregon. Um, the Yarn Crawl goes from March 7th to the 10th. We have not planned out which stores, um, well, we're trying to go to all the stores, but we haven't planned out like which stores on which day and in what order we have, you know, it seems pretty far away for us right now because we're a little bit last minute planners, but I will be working on that soon. But I'm very excited. I've wanted to go on this yarn crawl for a very long time. So if you're in the Portland area um, or if you can travel to it, there is eight yarn shops involved. Um, and I think I was keep taking notes on it and then I stopped. But I'll put the uh, website link down below so that you can check that out and see if that's something that's going to work for you. And as we get closer, if I have more details, I will let you know. And then lastly is Yarn Centric. The tickets are on sale right now, but this event is gonna be happening May 2nd and 3rd in Frederick, Maryland. It is adjacent to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, so you can go to both and really have a wonderful weekend there. Um, Yarn Centric has two events. It has a Thursday night event with Lobby Enemy um, that you can purchase a ticket for. All the details are on their site. And then on Friday is the shopping time. There's gonna be, I think like 30 vendors there. Now, if you do the Lobby and Me event, you will get this lovely project bag, which is so beautiful. If you are in the first time slot on Friday, you will get this lovely tote bag, and then extras of both will be available for purchase at the show. All right, y'all. That's everything for today. <laughs> I feel like I've chatted for hours. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. I talked about so many different things. I have tons, as always, I have links below for what I talk about, but especially today, I've got tons and tons of links organized down below. Just open up that description box, or if you're watching on a TV, open up on your phone or your iPad or your computer, the same video, and then, you know, arrow down. You, I think you have to like click, click show more or something, and you'll get to see all of that down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.